you should hear me again now. Yes, you can. Perfect. Okay. Oh yeah, the recording also started. This time maybe I just put up this. Good. So recording is started. Also, there is another PDF slide set for this panel. Uh, Sandra, could you upload that, please? Oh yeah, good. Um, again, we will do it just like panel. I will be posting some images, uh, so you don't need to open the PDF if you don't like to. Yeah, and also, also for everybody, uh, in case you didn't read it, uh, you can you can distribute the PDFs freely. That that's what what they are meant meant to be for. Um, so feel free. Good. Okay, since it's about time, let's start it off. Um, yeah. Oh boy, I'm really looking forward to this panel. Ah, my dear, beyond reality. Uh, I've called it a discussion panel on multiverse, non-duality, analytical psychology, and the implications to spiritual overkin. I'm a bit quiet. I will just try and speak up a bit. Actually, I cannot change that much. Oh, yeah, good. So, hmm, this panel is 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 a big experiment. I don't know if it works out. That's that's just normal for an experiment. Um, in case it works out, um, well, uh, or to put it in other words, the plan is the plan is to to teaser. <laughs> yeah. To, to tease us some ideas and some concepts, which may sound very, very weird. And of course, very spiritual, because this is about spirituality in, in the end. Um, and then the plan is to, to open up the stage uh, and, and to discuss them. Yeah. So I, I really much hope that this one won't be a one dragon show. Uh, but but I hope that that uh, uh, some of you would also like to share their, their experiences and speak up um if it works then we will have a, a pretty darn interesting discussion and uh a pretty much mind-blowing one i think um if it doesn't work then nobody will understand a word of what i'm telling uh and we will have saved about one hour or 45 minutes or something to something more interesting So let's just start it off. Okay, I'll be talking about a couple of topics. Um, as I said, maybe take half an hour for that. Um, I, I, I want to put a disclaimer. Um, I'm not a professional in these topics. I, I, I just discovered a few things and, and I just want to learn more. Um, also, when it comes to spirituality, I don't know the ground truth. Uh, I don't, actually, I don't think there is a ground truth. Uh, it's 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 strange that many spiritual people always search for the ground truth, but maybe there isn't one to begin with. Um, I also I, I don't want to invalidate any belief or or impose my own belief to anybody. I just describe how how my real, reality looks like. Okay. Can still hear me good. Okay, I'll just go on. Um, so, yeah, let's get ready for maybe a bit of mind blowing. And uh, let me take you back uh, to the time where I joined the the um, community. Uh, it was end of 2018, um, and at that time, my world looked a bit like this posting a, an animated gif there you are okay now i can see it yeah and you can see uh boom exactly 
So something exploded, obviously. Um, so what happened? Um, it was around Christmas and I was having a nice vacation, um, very relaxed, uh, nothing much to do, not, not much stress. Uh, I let my mind wander. I was listening to electronic music all the time. Uh, pretty nice music. I, I still love it. Um, I was working on, on something very, very simple, just a hobby. Um, yeah, and was thinking about different things. Yeah, there, there was no stress at all. Um, and I was thinking about things that, that actually uh, came to my mind earlier. Um, yeah, about how the world works. Um, and at some point, uh, um, some funny question came into my mind. Um, and it, it went like following, uh, well, usually it is said that the brain is creating consciousness. Um, but I just wondered, what if it was the other way around? What, what if consciousness was actually fundamental? Um, to, to reality. And for some reason that idea, it was very sticky. And, and at some point I, I found myself being literally overloaded with, uh, I don't know, a kind of borderline knowledge, uh, intuitive feeling, uh, channeled knowledge, I don't know. Um, but, but I got more and more ideas. Uh, and, and it just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't quiet them down. So I've worked my socks off um, to, to, to sort it out. I've worked until late, late at night, three o'clock or four o'clock, um, and, and I wrote it all down. I, I, I wrote really 15 pages in the end, and I tried to, to just sort, to sort out what came into my mind. That, that was pretty unbelievable. I was really living like in another, in another world. Uh, you could call it a, a huge, a huge mental shift. Uh, and that's actually what, yeah, m maybe it just was like that, yeah. So um, what I came up with was um, a thought experiment. Actually, that's what I was calling what I was calling it. I'm putting another image in the chat. Yeah, that's all right. Um, you can just speak. Um, the, the top element is is what I call the multiverse of minds, and actually, it's a world model. Um, uh, it's it's not the the multiverse theory as you know it. Uh, but it's, diff it's a bit different. In, in this theory, the, there is not an unlimited number of multiverses, um, but the, the, the number is actually limited by the, the amount of, of, of conscious beings in, in, in the multiverse. Um, multiverse of mind is, is a, hypothesis, uh, a hypothetical concept based on the assumption that the, the mind is fundamental to the universe. Um, and the bubbles you see um, um, are actually regions inside what I call multiverse, um, which is an infinite space, but, but there is a limited number of bubbles. Um, and I call the bubbles mindscapes. Uh, a mindscape is actually uh, the inner world of, of a conscious being. So every one of us has one. Yeah? So that is your inner world. And um, there can be things created inside a mindscape by using your imagination, obviously. That is pretty straightforward. Um, as you can see, the bubbles may overlap. And um, as you can see in, in the region where they overlap, I've put a small galaxy, um, which is a physical reality. So in, in, in that model of, uh, that was somehow channeled to me, maybe, um, Physical realities may emerge within these overlapping areas, you know, but the fundamental thing is the mindscapes. You know? uh, physical realities are based on interactions between the mindscapes. That implies that reality is not something that is out there, but that existence and the whole reality is relative to the conscious observer. 
Um, so, is this just a crazy thought experiment or is this channeled knowledge? Uh, Fox, I'm not sure if you can still hear me. Okay, good. All right. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I was, I was a bit unsure. Good. Next thing. Okay. Um, so the question was, was this just craziness? Uh, um, or had it some deeper meaning? Well, little did I know. Little did I know. Um, I've explored, I've explored in the, in the next year after that, um, something that I actually experienced. Now, you know, after I've had that, that epiphany, which, which maybe lasted one or two weeks, I was completely exhausted. I've written those 15 pages and I was completely exhausted. I was going out in nature and uh, I was struck down because the world felt different. Um, my, my senses were heightened. I, I just could hear more of, of the animals around. I could feel energies all around. I would get um, astral shifts. Uh, I would get get some kind of a feeling that 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 would feel like being connected with with everything. Um, a, a, a feeling so strong that it actually it it made me breathless. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering what 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 the heck was happening. Uh, and again, little did I know. Um, so I discovered the notion of the term non duality. Um, and actually, non-duality is is the modern term of of what what meditation uh, practice calls awakening. If you search for that term, um, you find different definitions. Wikipedia says um, it is a state of consciousness in which the dichotomy of I and other is transcended. Oh. Well, this doesn't tell us too much. Um, then there's Jeffrey Martin, psychologist and social scientist, uh, quite, quite interesting work. Um, he says it's an umbrella term for a very specific way it feels to be characterized by a disillusion of the sense of self, which is being replaced by something greater. Well, that's, that's actually a bit closer. Uh, then there is Rupert Spira, writer and artist, highly recommended. Uh, he says, non-duality is the experience of a fundamental reality from which mind and matter are derived. It is the experience that what I essentially am is what the ultimate nature of the universe essentially, and what the ultimate nature of the universe essentially is, are the same. So in that notion, non-duality is an experience of shared oneness, and that is exactly what I was experiencing. And finally, the best definition i think um yeah it does sound it, it, it does sound contradictory in some way it, it's a paradox it's, it's a total paradox um also it sounds completely esoteric it sounds completely esoteric unless uh, or until you experience it if you experience it it's it's just there it's just real and that's just it, it just struck you down it, it it changes everything um the final definition, and I think the best one, is, is from a web page, uh, Deconstructing Yourself, um, which is quite a funny way to put it. Um, let me put that link in the chat. So Deconstructing Yourself says, I'm quoting, non-duality is a sense of identity with the whole universe. You don't see the mountain, you are the mountain. You don't hear a bird, you are birdsong. Do you notice uh, that this notion has a direct relation to concept kin? Yeah, you are birdsong. That is a concept. So this this has an absolutely direct relation. Um, so well, for me, that feeling that is a life changing experience. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a traditional awakening. Huh? Um, I, I've written down, I've described it as, as one mind is all and all minds are one. Um, the question it was for me, the question is, is this maybe feeling 
the overlapping mindscapes. And I pretty much think that it is, but, but I just want to raise the question for, for, for the discussion. Yeah. Also, this is not just funny thinking or, or, or imagine top. Thousands of people have experienced this. Thousands of people. So um, there must be something going on. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, traditional Buddhist meditation insights. Um, I've talked about that. Uh, so actually, non-duality is the direct experience of insight, especially that that in terms of meta doesn't actually exist and there is no reality independent of the mind. Uh, I think that's that goes without question. What does science tell us about it? And that is quite interesting. If we take a look at quantum physics. Um, and there is one thing I stumbled across last year, uh, which is called Wagner's friend paradox. Um, science has written, uh, it's a quantum paradox that points to shaky foundations of reality. Uh, yesterday, I've read another article that says uh, Wagner's Wagner's friend paradox is maybe the, the most exciting discovery since Schrödinger's cat. Um, so that, that has caused quite some ruckus in the scientific community. Um, I won't explain about the paradox itself. That's much too complicated. You, you can look it up on Google or something. And also there's a source given in the PDF. Uh, but the outcome is, the, the outcome is, um, the, 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 there are actually four general assumptions in, in, in contemporary physics. Um, first, um, it is assumed that quantum physics is universally valid. Uh, second, uh, it is assumed that there is an objective reality. Uh, that means that there is a reality out there which is existing independent of anybody uh, conceiving it. Yeah? or anybody measuring it, it is just there. Then the third assumption is that observers can make free choices. Yeah? So I can, I can observe something or not, I can go some, somewhere or not, yeah? and, and, and you can too, free will. And then the fourth assumption is that a choice made by one observer in one place cannot instantly affect a distant event. Um, which is called locality. Yeah, so, so physics says, uh, takes the assumption that there is no bookie interaction. Yeah, there's, there's no way that, that a choice made in one place directly and instantly affects a distant event. Yeah, there's always a time lapse. Um, those are the four assumptions and, and you will have realized that they are quite basic. Yeah. I mean, most of, of the people would, would agree that they are true. But Wagner's friend paradox indicates that at least one of these assumptions is wrong, is wrong. So there might not be an objective reality in the end, or quantum physics might not be universally valid, or we might not have free will. And that is pretty, pretty stunning. Yeah? So it indicates that, that our physical understanding of reality, at some point, it's fundamentally flawed. At some point, there's something really wrong. And scientists are, since then, uh, they, 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 there's a high, high amount of discussion and, of course, controversy about that. Yeah, is there maybe some way to, to wiggle around uh, all of this? Yeah, uh, could not all the assumptions be true, but, but so far, it seems that at least one of them is wrong. Yeah? So, and, but, but we don't know which one. It could be all of them, it could be one of them, but we just don't know. At the moment, and the, the, the stunning thing is that um, the, the, the scientific team uh, um, that, who, who wrote that, uh, that paper, uh, they did some experiment uh, which, which actually backs up um, that, that, that outcome. Yeah. So this, this is not really only theoretical. Nowadays, you can do, you can do wicked quite uh, quantum physical experiments. It's really stunning. And they, they've set up something. I don't know how it works exactly. I'm not an expert. But they have set up some experiment that re that really proves um, that that one of the assumptions must be wrong. Even contemporary science somehow indicates that objective reality might not be that objective as it seems. Um, okay. 
So, something from um, science is analytical psychology, and I will post one last picture. Always doing it wrong. Oops, so oh, hang on. There we are. So this is the picture I did, um, and it shows actually the the map of the soul by uh, Carl Gustav Jung. Um, this is not a university lecture about analytical psychology, uh, and also again, I'm not an expert. Uh, I've just read that one book and um, and just know the basics. Um, just in a nutshell, um, that the psyche, as coined by Carl Gustav Jung, um, is placed between the physical reality and the transcendent realm. Um, the psyche is the green area, and as you can see, there are um, there are just no no fixed limits uh, b between them between the tree, uh, but there are more like like fluid um, um, yeah transients. Um, the yeah Jung calls the transients psychoid zones. Psychoid means psych similar to the psyche. That's what it means. So within the psyche, Jung places several things. Um, he places personal consciousness. Uh, then the personal unconscious, and then there is the collective unconscious. Um, collective unconscious, I won't tell you much about. Uh, archetypes were mentioned, I think, a bit earlier. Um, personal conscious is, consciousness is, is what you all know. Yeah. So in there, there, there are elements. Um, Jung calls them uh, complexes. Um, most prominently, there is the I complex. Um, this is what Freud calls uh, the ego, um, and this is quite well known to all of us. It's actually the, yeah, some kind of entity which which we are using to move uh, in this world. Uh, then there is the persona, um, which is a kind of mask uh, you are you are wearing when you are moving in a certain environment. Uh, for example, when you are at school or, or at your job or amongst friends, you will act in a certain way, uh, and and that is like wearing a mask. Uh, that mask is called persona, um, and it actually overlays the eye. You know? So so um, you know the saying that that it's hard to to look behind a person's mask, yeah, and that's exactly it. Um, so in the personal unconscious. There are also several elements, uh, most notably the shadow, which is pretty easy to understand. The shadow is uh, pretty much the exact opposite of the persona. Yeah, the shadow is actually bundling uh, everything you you would probably like to do, uh, but you are not allowed to because of external constraints. Uh, society doesn't allow it. Yeah, I mean, shadow, for example, yeah, you might want to uh, eat raw meat. And eat eat the meat with with your hands, but that is not allowed. So you you're using the tools and you're you, you're eating cooked meat. Uh, but but the shadow uh, the shadow really wants to 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 have the raw thing. Yeah. Uh, so we oh, all know that. Um, uh, obviously, uh, or, or uh, interestingly, the shadow shadow and and persona can be integrated. They 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 can be integrated. The the eye can can be some kind of mediator between them. Yeah, so, so that is told by Jung. Anima and animus, I won't tell you much about that. Um, it's, just, it's, it's a bit like like a, a spirit guide, uh, or, or anima and animus. Uh, they appear as spirit guides often. Uh, and they, they are quite close to, to what is called the true self. Now, the true self is, is, is a very important thing. Uh, true self is actually uh, the core of, of the whole psyche. It's it's what what we are at the core, and now you see that there is a direct link to other kinetic. Um, the true self is both what we are at the core and and uh, a notion for for the totality of the psyche. Every um, complex is actually uh, originating from the true self. Um, at 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 some points, the true self. At some points, it reads like everybody has got a true self. 
so so true self is something individual but at some other points um it it reads like there is only one true self to the whole universe which is quite interesting yeah i i i think that pretty much it's it, it may be just one or the other, depending how you look at it. Yeah. So there's a couple of questions uh, I might want to ask. Um, my, my idea is that other kin, um, they seem to have quite a weak identification with persona and physical body, and uh, also a high awareness of the existence of the persona. Yeah, I mean, we, we are all wearing a mask, but, but this many people don't really realize. Um, also, other kin, especially spiritual other kin, it seems to me, or, or uh, well, it's just a proposal um, that they have a, a quite a high awareness of the existence of the true self, which is unusual. Most people would identify with their ego I, and for some reason we don't. Yeah, so so or we, or we maybe do, but but to a much lesser extent. Yeah. My my guess is that that um that the true self is actually defining our identities, and for some reason we just realize that much more than than the average person. Um, so yeah, that is the question: Is the true self the source of our identity? Jung says that the integration of the true self into consciousness creates transcendental awakening and symbols symbols. So. Symbols can be anything. Um, there, there can also be synchronicities. I've I've put that at the side of the picture. Synchronicities are um, meaningful coincidences, so to say. Um, but I wonder if could our kin types be symbols of our true selves? Um, that is actually a question I am wondering about. Um, last slide. Um, is stressing this idea a bit more. Uh, kin type as a symbol of the true self. Um, I've written down the following. I, I'll just read the text. This is very personal, but I'll just read it. So I have no idea if I really am a blue plasmatic celestial dragon somewhere in the astral. It may just be a fancy imaginary picture I like to think of to describe myself. I just don't know. I cannot prove. I think nobody of us can. But but there are things I I can be totally sure of. And those are the characteristics that this dragon me represents. If I explore myself, ignoring everything physical, even omit my own little ego mind, I find joy, curiosity, playfulness, benevolence, the will to learn, teach, explore, and create. That is what is in there. It is it is absolutely and, and 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 obviously there. If I go really deep in there, it sometimes feels like an endless, ageless soul that exists light years afar. There is an incredible amount of confidence and energy. There is an insane amount of unity, feeling connected to all living beings and nature, and the urge to protect and care. And last but not least, there is unlimited freedom. Actually, at this time, I, I, I've i realized how important freedom is to me. This is just incredible. Yeah, so all of that is there. I feel it during meditation, and it's, it's, it's just what I am. There is so much of it all that it's almost impossible to bear, that it gives me tears and makes me grasp for breath. All of this is clearly not, not God or any other higher entity. For me, I have to put, yeah? Many people are calling that God, I don't. For me, it is what myself is, what truly makes me up. That is what I can be totally sure of. And my kin type is a perfect way to describe this. So, um, and I dare say, what could be more fitting for Celestial Dragon, yeah. <laughs> okay, so these are the things I find beyond my reality. And now, pretty much good in the time, I would like to hear what you find. So, 
if there is anybody who would like to speak up about any of the topics, please raise your hand or claw or whatever. I will try to have a look. And if there is actually nobody raising anything right now, I will have a look in the chat. Uh, if you got any questions, got any questions, then just put them in the chat and I will just ramble a bit uh, if you prefer that. Um, if some of the staff would have a look if somebody raises their hand because I cannot see it if, if I'm in the chat. So, uh, as Beyond writes, this bit made my fiction can brain go. Oh, mind scopes may overlap physical realities may merge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, the multiverse binds is pretty inclusive. Yeah. So, you could also say that it's it's an hypothesis that explains everything. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the problem is that it's not too scientific. It's not too scientific. Um, so, but actually, yeah, fiction can realities according to that hypothesis, they are totally possible. Um, and the hypothesis removes the, the, the notion of, of being uh, uh, in infinite amount of minds or of, of multiverses or universes, you know, which many people don't like. Okay, let's see. That was fantastic. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, the concept is confusing. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Um, you, 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 you don't have an idea. When, when I was really pretty much overloaded with all of that stuff, uh, I thought I was going mad. Actually, writing this all down, getting it all sorted out, putting even some, some degree of science into there. Um, I've made definitions, I've made assumptions, and I've written it all down. I've, I've, I've written uh, uh, lemmas and, and, and uh, theorems and so on. Um, doing that was, was my only single way to get out of there without getting mad. And during that time, I always had the feeling that, that uh, well, I, 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 I really I expected reality to, to dissolve at any moment. I, 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 uh, to be honest, I, I was expected to die. Uh, by, by the way, death is not, not something that, that I'm afraid of. Uh, if, if you got this type of epiphany, that's just, it's just, it's just what goes away. Um, yeah, so it's, it's totally confusing. It's totally paradox. I would love to hear an audio book. <laughs> okay, I never thought about that. A narrative for animal plant. <laughs> oh, my dear. Uh, well, actually, I don't like my voice. Uh, my voice, my voice sounds strange. I, I'm suffering of voice dysphoria, I, I think. Uh, could you talk a bit more about collective unconscious? Uh, I didn't prepare for that. Collective unconscious. Um, it's similar to the notion of morphic resonance by Rupert Sheldrake. Um, collective unconscious is some kind of knowledge that is shared by the totality of a species. Obviously, Jung um, did only research the human psyche. I don't think that he was aware of the existence of other kin. And obviously, he was not aware, or not so much aware, of the existence of systems. The, the picture I've, I've posted it applies to singlets only. Uh, it could be extended to, to systems. But um, I, I don't think that back at Jung's time, systems were so well known or so, so well researched. Yeah? I mean, the, the, the research is poor at, 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 that, uh, at that point, even today. Yeah? Mm. Uh, well, coming back to collective unconscious, yeah. Uh, so the t totality of knowledge of a species, um, which is in spiritual circles sometimes also named um, Akahashic records some kind of library where actually every member of a species can can uh, have access to but i don't think that it's it's totally related to species only i think it's more kind of a, a universal kind of library intuitive knowledge yeah so to say 
maybe the place where where my knowledge or borderline knowledge comes from. Uh, yeah. Um, Jung places two things in the collective unconscious. Um, those are, you know, archetypes. That's a bit hard to explain. Archetypes are they are some kind of templates for for uh, um, characteristics and traits uh, people can have in real lives. For for example, there's the archetype of of the hero, um, or I can't think of anything else right now. So um, heroes were were actually uh, present in every culture, yeah, and also of course the instincts, yeah. We know that we know them pretty well. Most people try to suppress them, which might not be such a good idea at, at, at all, all the time. Um, yeah, but that is pretty much I, all I can tell about the collective unconscious. I, I would need to read more into that. Actually, there's not much about it in, in the book I've written, uh, which is actually called um, C.G. Jung's uh, Map of the Soul by Murray Stein. Murray Stein, I, I wanted to write a a summary of that, but I, I didn't find the time. Shadow work, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the, the shadow work is, is more or less uh, trying to integrate the shadow. Uh, that, that is, I think, a very interesting thing. Okay, let me see. Did anybody raise their hands? No, they didn't. So just do encourage you if you want to, to talk, please. Raise your hand. Wow, there's one. Uh, Fireberg. Oh, how do I invite you? Maybe like this. Uh, did it work? Oh, it worked. Yes. Oh. Hello. Um, I am not entirely sure what I want to say, but I know I want to say something. Um, <laughs> so bear with me a second. <laughs> Um, a lot of what like was being said about that the multiverse, it was just like, y y yes, this is my beliefs about the multiverse summed up quite well. Um, I don't think I had really thought of it in terms of like the amount of it limited by the amount of consciousness, but that makes a lot of sense because I always felt like it was probably limited by something. Um, oh. Um, there was more I wanted to say, and now my brain's just gone. No. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're um, good, you're good. You're good. Uh, maybe I, I can comment on it. Um, the thing is, I, I, I pretty much think that it, it, it is a nice way to think about how the world works. But what really struck me, what really struck me, you know, I've explored all that without even even knowing about non-duality or, or meditation insights. I didn't even meditate. It just it just I just stumbled across it, and later the, the, the one and a half year or yeah or two the, the two years later, I just found out that thousands of people have experienced the same thing, and that is what struck me. It it there must be something to it. It's, it, it just, I don't know what it is, but it, it must be, to me, it must, it, it, to be honest, it, um, is some, it, is more than, it is more than a thought experiment, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've ever quite experienced that moment of feeling like, uh, the feeling like you're describing and feeling like connected to everything quite that way, but like, I think I can understand what you're saying at the same time, and it's also just like the way you've presented the multiverse as a thing is just it's something i've seen for a long time and it never really hit me all at once it's just sort of built up over time as like the way i understand things has just become that if that makes sense yeah uh thing is that i i cannot control it i cannot really uh do it on purpose uh, get there on purpose it it seems that it it needs some it seems to need some other element that that comes from beyond reality and and in some way they have to collaborate um so i can't i can't try to 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 um 
to create a positive atmosphere such that I can get into that unity feeling, but I cannot force it. Mm. Okay. Uh, um. Let's see if there is anything more in the chat. Um, I've actually lost track of the time. Oh yeah, we have plenty of time actually. So oh, let's just ramble on until um. until nobody is listening. <laughs> you, you want to say something? Sorry. You want to add something? No, I was just kind of sorry. Should okay. I leave? Okay. Okay. I just. Uh... I think I I think you you may I I don't know if you can do that but <laughs> um, okay nobody's raising their hand so I'll just look at in the chat because I I've seen some questions oh hang on now it's a bit confused uh, I um, as far as I can tell the current discussion is about the whole everyone is of a kin they just have an awakened kind yeah, of yeah. concept yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Rai is, 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 is raising the theory that everybody might be technically kin to everything in some form, but the kin times people conform are the ones that they feel most connected to. Pretty much, yeah. I, I would say, I would say yes. I mean, uh, huh, it, it's a paradox. Um, I've, I've actually posed the question. Um, where, 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 again, the question is, in my case, Where's the dragon? Where's the dragon in there? And um, somebody told me that, hey, if you are feeling that you are everything, then of course you are also dragon, which is totally true. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> but why? Why is the dragon so sticky? Yeah. Why do I feel so comfortable with being a dragon, in, in, uh, well, in favor of being a wolf or something? I don't know. I, I, I didn't find out. So uh, I pretty I, much guess that, yeah. I have a friend who um, has a belief in that they do have a decision on their future lives, and I don't want to get too much into them because they're not in this convention right now. But like, because of their belief system and because of what they are, they believe that they can choose where they reincarnate next and who they reincarnate around and all the venture stuff. Yeah, I, I totally um, second that belief. And for them, it's a direct link to what they are as well that allows them to do that because they have memories of being like on a multiversal scale influencing things. And yeah. I am here for the lack of linear time. <laughs> I, I'm on board with the lack of linear time. I. I don't understand how time works, but it sure as hell isn't linear. <laughs> time. Oh, well, time. For me, time is just a tool. Time, time is, only, is only relevant as long as you are in reality. I, I don't think time is actually relevant outside of the reality or any physical I mean, reality. I mean, you get people talking about, like, experiencing the same event from like remembering the same event, same lifetimes from multiple points of view and stuff like that so there's definitely something to time being a load of nonsense <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, i can see another hand raised uh, uh, let me invite you yeah there's there's all sorts of strange things happening with time there's precognition uh remembering past lives um also, I pretty much second the idea that, that you are choosing your, your own incarnation. You know, the, the whole concept of reincarnation, uh, I've always believed in it because it, it's just logical. Because, I mean, um, just think logically about it. Um, before we were alive here in this world, we, we were obviously dead. So we were in another state. Yeah. And... Uh, in the end, if we leave this world, we, we will be in, in, in that other state again. Um, so th 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 there are states and, and there are transitions between the states. So why, why should that transition happen only once? It, it doesn't make sense. Only, yeah, only... I, 
I've always believed in reincarnation and it was part of the reason I found myself so easy to get my head around the other kin stuff was because I started with the reincarnation stuff and that just inherently made sense to me. Yeah. Hi there. Hi, oh. <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, sorry that I can't uh, talk too long or too loudly because I have someone in the same room as me working. Um, but I wanted to ask about the um, Mindscapes thing again and also say that it's heavily relatable for us in our uh, collective because we're a system that was like created outside of this body at some point and how like we were able to kind of like create our own like mini pocket world because of it. Um, but I just I found it really interesting. That's what I usually want to say. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. I just see a comment in the chat that asks me to take something back, but I don't know what it is. I don't want to offend anyone. I mean, I mean, really, I, I'm only talking about about my little world. It, it 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 doesn't mean that it's in any way relevant for you. How about my voice? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's just the way it feels. Um, so the person worried about, like... ending up being a normal human when they reincarnate? Um, I mean, sorry to talk about my friend again. Um, my friend is just a lot of things honestly um right. sorry about this um but the um they're the host of a system and they believe that they picked up their headmates through all these different lives and that's why they're a system ah oh. ah oh, that is interesting yeah, well, they just kind of not? picked up the souls of people they care about as they go along Yeah, I mean, uh, I pretty much think that may maybe systems are just overlapping mindscapes as well. Obviously, they are because in some way they 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 their inner worlds at some point overlap, so that th there is an internal uh, kind of uh, internal common world. Yeah, or uh, many people mm -hmm. describe that. Yeah, uh, be, yeah they they've talked the about bringing me along, <laughs> and. I try to keep a healthy level of skepticism towards things even when they're my own beliefs because I don't, if that makes sense, like I believe them wholeheartedly but like if they turned out not to be true I wouldn't be upset if that makes sense and um, if my friend can't pick me up because it's not true I won't be upset but if they can pick me up I am very excited for it. <laughs> Ah, oh, now I see. Uh, well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be scared. Scared about that. Um, that. That's the first thing I want to comment. Um, and the second thing I want. I, I want to say, in my opinion, it's up to you. It is really up to you. In my concept of of or in my understanding of my little world, um, a mindscape is a region that belongs to you and nobody else. You can you can invite people. Uh, but you can also you can always kick out people. Uh, many people are concerned about about uh, the, uh, yeah well walk-ins or or entities coming from the outside into their mind. But I think in the end, it's your decision uh, whom uh, whom you you will allow to be in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I can, I'm definitely going with them. It'll be great. <laughs> I think it will be up to you. No, I have decided that is what I want to do. Then this will probably happen. But you know, the problem is more that most people don't even talk, don't, don't, don't even think about that. They don't even think about these things. Yeah. yeah. For example, my, my mother, my mother, he, she thinks that uh, when she's dying, then, then everything will be gone and, and, and that, that all, everything would be it. Yeah. 
and I'm somehow trying to point uh, to a maybe that's not what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I think it will be up to her. Yeah, it's it's really up to us. Uh, it's just a yeah. Um, you should be true to what you believe, and and don't don't be limited. Don't let anybody else tell you what what you should believe. Uh, mm. as, as long as long as you well, of course, it doesn't make much sense to believe that the Earth is flat uh, because there is overwhelming evidence that it is not. Uh, but when it comes to your own spirituality, that the, the sky is the limit. There, there really is no limit. Yeah. So uh, ne never listen to anybody. Let, don't listen to anything I say. Let, listen to yourself. I can only I can only explain what what I feel. Okay, let me see. No waste hand. What do we have in the chat? I'm only looking at, at the more recent messages right now. Uh, parallel life, soul split and merge. Yeah, I've thought about that. Soul split and merge. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, that's possible. so fun. Is it? I think it's possible. It's uh, quite something and it messes with my head a bit, but I I think it's happened to me. <laughs> I, I don't know. Quite something. How, how do you come to the conclusion, if if you might? Um, it's... Um, you don't need to talk about it if you don't want to. Yeah, I don't think I want to. Sorry. It's no problem. Um, the thing is just, just I, I, I didn't experience anything like that. Uh, uh, there's just one, one entity inside here. Yes, yeah? so I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I didn't find much, much other entities on the singlet. So I don't know if, if how it feels mm -hmm. when soul splits. Yeah. Uh, also, it just said that souls can merge, which would be yeah, logical. Yeah. The merging is the one I've experienced, and it wasn't like with someone else. In, it was like a separate person completely in another life. Somehow we got merged together into one coherent single being. Yeah, that, that is so fascinating. I, I, I imagine it like, like individual mindscapes that, that go into full overlap. Uh, such that in the end they, they they cannot be differentiated from each other. Yeah, you know the 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 picture of the bubbles. You imagine two bubbles just just overlapping, fully overlapping. Yeah, like it starts off they're two bubbles that are just touching, but eventually they just become one bubble. Yeah, that's that's yeah, could be an image. What we've actually done that ourselves is the splitting. Of the Oh, sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Sorry about that. Um, I just said that we do the same thing as well with like a soul splitting and merging. Yeah, I think systems can can talk a lot about that. I'm still reading the chat, and also maybe I take a look if anybody raises their hand. That space, yeah. Someone writes, my belief is very crazy and massive. My thoughts might hang on. Not make sense sometimes, but this allows me a framework of mind. This allows me a bridge to different beliefs. And in this context, different forms of alter humanity, yeah. Uh, in, in some way, this, this was the case for me too. Um, yeah, if you want to speak about it, then, then uh, please go ahead. Um, I'm just looking into the raised hand. Uh, the, the thing is that um, when, when I was thinking about the theory I, uh, or my, my idea about how it works, I, tr I really tried to, to find something that would include um, more or less every belief system or that would be as inclusive as possible. I mean, I've really find the whole term existence. It, it, it's not, not normally. It's the notion is that that um, 
something exists if it is real. But if there is um, no objective reality and only subjective realities, and as I said, physics is on the verge of proving that, um, then that means that also existence is to be defined individually. Yeah, existence is, is, is depending on, on, on who observes. Uh, and that way, for example, God, I, I've, I've told it, for me, there is no God. But for, for, for a Christian believer or, or um, yeah, and any believer in God, God is absolutely real. Subjective reality that was mentioned before. Um, and there's no, there, there's no arguing about that. Yeah, and I'm I'm putting that level of reality just at the same level as as every material object. That's that would be the 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 uh, the outcome of the whole thought. Yeah. Yes, that but, just that that I think for me, I do believe in several gods, and I think that. The existence of gods is they're only as real as they are when people are believing in them if that makes sense like they're only real because people believe in them and they're only really real to the people who believe in them if that makes sense <laughs> um i am wondering about that mm, let's see well maybe um... i don't think i quite worded that right but in my defense it's 10 p.m there's no, no problem. That's quite an interesting question. The question is, if some people, if a person believes in God, like God being an, an external entity, yeah? So um, does God exist just because they believe in, in God? Or uh, is there really a, a mindscape that is attributed to, to God? Or maybe is, there, is the, the mindscape of the person who believes in God uh, is there some some other mindscape splitting up that or or inside there which represents God? So what I mean to say is is there is there an, an independent entity that that is God? Maybe was that entity there before, and um, it wasn't wasn't even arising when they started to believe in it, but but they just explored that it's there. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think everything is possible. I just don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think many believers have, would say, that, hey, God is, is there, of course, is there, regardless if I believe or not. Yeah. I just explored God. Yeah. Uh, and in that case, that clearly indicates that there is an entity. Yeah. Mm. God. yeah. I think there's something to be said for the idea that. God exists, gods exist as separate entities because I've seen a lot in pagan circles, a lot of people come into the same conclusions independently about gods that aren't in mm -hmm. the like written things we have about them. They're coming separately to the same conclusions about the same gods. But they're also coming to some different conclusions. And <laughs> it's just, it's really weird and interesting, like the existence of like deities, I think. Yeah, this is. I can't fully wrap my mind around it. I would, I would definitely, I, I, I would um, favor the idea that deities exist in the multiverse, being equipped with their own mindscapes at some point. Uh, at mm -hmm. least, at least a portion of them. Yeah. Uh, but the, you know, the the multiverse of minds is a very, very strange structure. Um, I didn't. I, I didn't actually tell you half of it. Um, it's so paradox. It is. It is like a fractal. I was actually thinking about adding a fractal to to the slide set, but it would have been too much. You should so, have done. But, Fractals are so pretty. Um, yeah, just to explain. Do you remember that one Simpsons episode where where you see the Simpsons sit on the sofa and then the camera zooms out? And, and zooms out and out and you see the city and you see the earth and then you see universe and the camera it keeps zooming out and out and out and you see some weird funny structures and, and, and moving colors and then in the end you see some atomic like structures and then it keeps zooming out and out 
and in the end it it zooms out of of Homer's head, and in the end you see the Simpsons sitting there again. Do you know that? That's exactly uh, it how it is. It rings a bell. It, yeah, it's exactly how it is. It is a it it is a structure that contains itself in itself. My theory is that a single mindscape may contain the whole multiverse. And that that is part of 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 the of the of the feeling I got about it. And I deep inside in me, I can feel that that it, it, it there must be something to it. I uh, to me that it is it is truth uh, basically how it is. Well, it is borderline truth. I cannot prove it, but it is really a strong belief. So as long as there is one single mindscape still existing, the whole thing exists. It's it's I'm I'm actually I'm feeling that I'm living in it. It's it's a, it's kind of a fractal fractal field of consciousness. I've called it. That's how it feels. Sorry, it's just no. This game sucks. No species customization. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. It really does. I I think I fit a spot. <laughs> yeah, it, it is quite intriguing. Um, Big Blue Cat asks if there is a way uh, I can be contacted to to continue the talk. Uh, there are several ways. You can send me a PM over Discord. Uh, you can hook me up on Community. Uh, and you can also write me a mail. Uh, let me just let me just put my mail address into the question if you like. Well, mailing is for old school people, but this is the mail address guardian dragon slash amber at yahoo.com. Uh, but bear with me, bear, bear with me. I'm I'm a super busy dragon. I'm always a busy jerk. Oh, okay, okay. Then you get into a paradox where you get who invented those gods and who invented them, etc. Yeah, um, it, it's. This whole multiverse thing is just very confusing, but it also makes complete sense. It's like confusing, but makes complete sense at the same time. I think, uh, yeah. We we have run, yeah, we are constantly running into paradoxes. I just read that one comment, deferring interpretation of gods. So I have a belief that the physical can impact the astral. Um, pretty much it can, yeah. And mentality of humanity can impact how they experience what the gods project to them. Interesting theory. More like a filter. Yeah, filtering is a very interesting or a very important concept. Um, in some way, uh, we, we are probably experiencing a filtered version of, of the um, uh, fundamental reality, uh, which is something advocated by Donald Hoffman. Donald Hoffman is, is, is actually a researcher at the uh, University of uh, Virginia, I think. I think, mathematician. And uh, if, if you're interested in these things, I highly recommend his TED Talks. Just look, at, look him up on, on, on YouTube. It's Donald Hoffman um, on um, the case against reality. The case against reality. He says um, that basically um, we are all conscious agents, uh, which pretty much chime, chimes in with my idea. And reality um, is basically a filtered version of, of the, 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 the truth that is, that is uh, at the ground of it all. Yeah? And our bodies and all the reality are just avatars that we, that we use to interact which is exactly my impression and the, the thing is that he tries to put it into a scientific into scientific terms yeah he says that actually um quantum physics and all physics should should boot up from there and especially uh, actually uh, quantum physicists some of them uh, would actually second that idea i know that max planck um the very famous scientist um would would also have said that consciousness is fundamental. Um, it's one one of the possible interpretations of quantum theory, um, but this is highly highly debated. Also, there is a much 
a lot of of controversy and and bias and and belief in there yeah it's always said that scientists are unbiased but it's just not the case being a professional scientist i, I can assure you that scientists are most of them are humans and they, they, they are always biased and they they are governed by beliefs and and things they don't like and so on so on. okay Uh, there's been a couple of discussion about belief creates power. Yeah, I've thought about the role of belief. You know, um, I'm I've defined imagination as as the the one major power, as I call it. Of course, it's physically not not a ball, uh, right? Uh, imagination, uh, an absolute power that that can be used to create things inside um, a mindscape, but belief. I would guess in some way it's also needed. I, I'm not really sure about that. Okay. What if God's is the internet of our higher selves and we are the characters they write about or play as in uh, massively multiple, uh, how is it called, uh, online role playing games? I don't like the idea of being a character. Uh, somebody else created. It's not how it feels. For me, it's not how it feels. If it feels like that for you, that's valid. Absolutely. But it's just not how, how it feels. I never felt like that. Um, okay, the U says, I grew up with a spiritual background, Buddhist background, and Michael Conity. Uh, while art opens my mind even more to appreciate different forms. Uh, dropping notes. Okay, I'm just searching for anything I can pick up. Okay, I don't see a question there actually. Okay, yeah. I actually love sharing these experiences. This is so this is so mind blowing, you know. Do you have any spiritual beliefs when it comes to dreams? Mm. Uh, first of all, I'm a lucid dreamer. Uh, lucid dreaming is natural to me. Um, Dreams are a bit of a of a riddle. I'm somewhere. I'm not sure what they are. Uh, are they just some strange things the brain creates? Um, yeah, more like in a chaotic way, or are they some messages from from the outside? Um, maybe it's something in between. I, I would say it's something in between. I've had dreams that are so intense you won't believe it. I I've had one dream uh, in which I wow how do I explain how do I explain that I I just was living a whole life a whole other life as some kind of dinosaur or maybe dragon I don't know um, I think it was a female dragon or dinosaur and i've i've had i've had a husband like and I laid an egg and i've had some children and uh and in the morning i i woke up and it felt like uh, um what is this now oh it's, it's, yes i can somehow remember that reality um and i was stumbling into the kitchen uh, made a cup of coffee and I took me half of the day or, or, or maybe the whole day to, to really arrive back in this reality. And that dream, it felt like, it felt like years. Wicked, wicked dream. It is the, the, the most wicked dream I've ever had. And I don't know what it means. It's just, it's so sticky. It's, 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 I don't know what to say about it. Mm. Yeah, lucid dreaming. Um, you know, I've mentioned that I've, I've uh, I'm now um, doing a um, biphasic sleeping pattern. That means I'm sleeping for 
five hours or something or even less during the night and another one and a half hours during the day i've realized that during one the, the one and a half hour sleeping phase during the first 20 or 30 minutes i would reach a deep REM sleep phase with very intense dreams and lucid dreams are bound to happen quite often during that phase much more often than than earlier when i was sleeping normally um it actually it happened again today you know? and uh, sometimes then i realized that hey i've just got a wicked dream and i wake up and take a look at the clock and and i realize that, that was just half an hour how can that be uh so it's quite an interesting effect but basically i cannot teach how to how to do lucid dreaming i suggest to look up some internet sites there's two ways of doing it actually um uh, wake induced or, or sleep induced lucid dreaming uh to me it's it's more or less natural it's i always could do it i just need to to explore it uh dream with basic multiverse ideas everything that could ever exist at any time already does exist somewhere yet that that is not exactly what what my version is telling um things like tv shows and stuff and so yeah hang on that 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 rings a bell um wh what about tv shows and 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 fiction and so on um could 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 fiction be um some kind of of channeled knowledge from a universe that exists um due to uh overlapping mindscapes at at another place in the multiverse absolutely yes i totally think yes uh, many story writers will tell you that the, the characters they write uh would have uh, some kind of own um life and and would some in some way develop on their own uh, rather than than being invented and there is a quite distinct difference between imagining something and just describing something that is already there so could those characters be actually entities that exist somewhere in the multiverse it's absolutely thinkable i mean now this is completely esoteric but if if you have experienced it or uh, if you are a, a writer uh, or to that extent a fiction kin mm, it, it, it might be totally real it, it, might, it might just be there just just as just like this feeling of unity is there for me yeah i, I, I wouldn't discount that yes this implies people can never create anything new i think they can actually the the, the, the feeling is that they can uh, yeah, it might, it might come into kind of, of uh, another paradox, <laughs> but that is normal. We get dreams of being another person all the time. We almost never dream of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. There, there is also the the some someone actually had the theory that that um, remembering past lives would would not be remembering past lives but actually remembering lives of other persons or other, or other beings uh, there is all kinds of speculation about reincarnation and past lives it's that past lives uh, there's quite a lot of research on that um, if you want to look it up search for the names ian stevenson and jim tucker um, those are two scientists that have researched thousands of children remembering past lives. Uh, especially Jim Tucker mentions always one very intriguing story about a boy remembering to be a World War II, World War II pilot. Um, very, very interesting. And the thing is that these children, they, they really report that they remember their own lives uh, and, and not the lives of others. But I mean, re remembering the lives of others, that's, yeah, why not? I think it's possible. Um, you see that for me, pretty much everything is possible. But the thing is, um, if you experience it, then you experience it. It's there. It's real. That's nobody who, uh, who, who am I to talk that away? It's just, yeah, I won't do that. Yeah, so that is why I always tell, tell people, stick to what you experience. And also, 
There is so much talk about terms in the Avakin community. I always wonder why. Why don't people just just explain what they experience? You don't have to 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 uh, to to stick to a term. Yeah. What all that uh, that that matters is is what what you experience. Okay. Okay, let's see if somebody raises the hand. No, nope, not at the moment. Uh, I was going to ask if I could come on. Uh, I'm not sure if you got my ping. I can't raise my yeah, hand yeah, in the yeah, chat, I, so, okay, yeah. I was see, see. Yeah. Tell us yours. Uh, cool. Um, you were talking about dreams and stuff, and it sort of reminded me. I've only had, like, a few dreams where I've been a coyote before, or I've had one in my dreams. I've only had one where I've actually been a coyote. And the one uh -huh. where I was was like a star trek holodeck type thing where i was like a camp counselor and stuff it was pretty fun but towards the end of the dream i came like i came up on this place that that had like sort of like an inclined hill towards the top of a cave and like a river running through it and like river running underneath that actually um and i like turned into a coyote to try to get up there um because i had to get on all fours to go down and do it hmm. um and later on, I went camping at a place local to me, and it was almost an exact mirror of that geology. I have a picture that I can pull up in a minute. Um, yeah, which was incredibly just, I'm not sure, like not weird, but interesting. Hold on. I have this picture of me here, the me at it. Um, I've had that happen. And for the longest time, I thought that I was a, like a, a psychological theory. And back whenever I thought I was a dog, um, I only be, I only realized I was a coyote like a year, coyote a, real, a year ago. But back whenever I thought I was a dog, I was like very hard set in the fact that I was a psychological theory and based on imprinting from like it consuming a ton of dog media as a kid. Um, but uh, recently, I've just I don't really feel like coyote fits under that because I didn't really uh, consume anything related to coyotes as a kid. Um, and I don't know where it came from. I've had like one other dream uh, related to that, or sorry, one other dream related to kin types. And whenever I thought I was a Puccina, I had a super vivid dream that I was like a Puccina pup and like my mother had ran off into the woods to go find something. I had like gone off after her. And then a houndoom chased me back into my cave and I think killed me. I don't remember. Um, but I like very vividly remember her lighting the fire before she left and a whole bunch of other stuff. And it was so much, it seemed so much longer than it actually was. Like it was only in one night. Like it was, I guess, the equivalent of one night sleeping. But it just was super vivid. I don't know. I guess there's just something to be said with the representation of those dreams. And I still question Kuchina as a kin type. It doesn't really present itself as much as it as much now as it used to. So I don't really know, but it's wild. And yeah, Espion, I totally agree. Yeah, that's that's some great experiences. Well, ha, dreams are such a great way to to, to really feel who, who we are. Um, I, I do. I did have some dreams as a dragon, but um, yeah, unfortunately, not too many. Mm. Also, when I'm lucid dreaming, I always, or sometimes, I'm trying to turn into a dragon, but uh, it turns out that that it's quite hard. I, I, I yeah. would say that <laughs> uh, somehow it feels that the human brain thing gets into the way. Yeah, so. <laughs> It it tends to be to 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 stay human, yeah, and and I just don't want that and turn into a dragon, but it's not easy. And also the 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 thing that you described, um, dreaming about that place and then later, um, being at at just that place where where I assume you never were there before. No, I had never gone to the, like yeah. up to that part of that campsite. Um, I think it was about a month or so before I went there. Let me check. I have it written yeah. down. Yeah, uh, they, they, this is this is a known phenomenon. Uh, Precognitive dreams are more common than you might think. Um, so, so that's not, nothing too crazy about it. Um, it's just, yeah, many, so many people have reported that 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 one is actually tempted to think that there must be something to it, uh, nonlinearity of time or something. Yeah, but. Uh, 
yeah in some in some yeah. ways precognitive dreams are are so so wicked that that they just cannot be explained by a standard physical model yeah and uh, yeah uh, it was actually just 12 days before I went there. So I would say I'd say it's typical. Yeah, I haven't really had it happen with anything else before, so it was really interesting. And I didn't realize that I didn't like make the connection until like I think um, almost two or three weeks later. I'm like, wait, I'm, like I had to go back and like look at what I had written for that dream and stuff. Writing yeah. down dreams that are very vivid is very helpful. If you guys don't do that already, yeah. you should. Yeah, totally second that. Absolutely. Uh, would precognition dreams be considered a psychic power? Um, basically, yes. It's it's in within that realm. Uh, well, of course, this is this is really parapsychology. Uh, it's it's nothing scientific, but it is just that people report this all over and over again, and uh, there seems to be something to it. Uh, it's it's up to uh, up to each of us. What to make of it? Yeah, um, how how it changes our our perceptions of or our understanding of how the world works. Yeah, some some people might dismiss it just as coincidence, while other people might might think, hey, uh, this this means that that really time is not linear, and uh, maybe come to a conclusion or to to a belief like, similar to the one I did or or uh, the, what Buddhism is telling anything. That was all I had to say, though. Um, I think you have about 10 minutes left, just so you know. OK. I think I will just take a look at the chat, see if there is anything. Otherwise, we can close this a bit earlier. But I really, I really enjoyed the panel. This, this was a great panel. You're, you're, you're so great, people. Fox, you're, you're so fantastic. Writing down visions and dreams, yeah. And dreams, dreams are often boring. Now nah, that's not a problem I get. My, my dreams are just wicked most of the time. If I can remember them, I, I just go like, oh. Yeah, what was that? You could make you could make pretty pretty much some Hollywood movies uh, of 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 many of my dreams. Um, visualization, yeah, uh, I, I I know that v visualization is something that that is difficult for for some people. Um, th th there are even people who cannot visualize at all, doing it all the time. Um, Actually, cannot cannot really imagine how how it's like to to not visualize anything. Uh, I see that there is a ping. How do you practice visualization? Well, we call it daydreaming. I mean, I just do it automatically. If I, if I think about my dragon self, or I just imagine a dragon. There's not no real practice to it. Don't know if that makes sense. All right, still discussion going on. Yeah, I also have to to cook dinner at some point. Do you know of desired reality shifting? Huh. Yeah, I could tell something about it. The notion that reality is created by the mind implies that it should be possible to change reality um, by using some kind of mental power. And that is, of course, a very parapsychological thing. Um, in parapsychology, and, and we, we've had the topic yesterday, there are experiments, uh, lots and lots of experiments over decades that have shown or more or less they, they claim to have shown that um, random number generators quantum level number random number generators um, can be influenced by by mental activity 
Um, if you listen to, to people uh, who did these experiments, like Dean Radin, for example, is a very, I, I like it. I like him. He's a scientist at the Institute of Noetic Sciences. Um, if you listen to those people, there is, there is overwhelming evidence that there is a, a very slight but significant um, um, influence. Yeah. Uh, then, if you take a look at the skeptics, all skeptics will, will argue against that and against that and against that. Yeah, they, they, will, they will pop out any argument that, that comes in mind. Yeah, you, did, you, you didn't do it often enough. You did do that wrong. There is a systematic error in there. Ooh, I would be surprised if there's a systematic error in, in a thousand experiments. <laughs> uh, well, but there are skeptics that are telling this. And um, uh, yeah, so th th there's a high controversy if reality can be directly um, altered by the mind um, and uh, to, to just conclude that uh, my impression my impression uh, um, the the skeptics are um, they tend to to even get personally offensive towards the parapsychological people and that is something I don't like at all that that is that is really not not uh, how it should be done. Yeah, uh, th there are skeptics organizations. Uh, GWUP, for example, is one of them, or Psy Psy, Psy Org or something. How's that called? Anyhow, skeptics tend to to personally attack um, the parapsychological folks, and that that that's not that's not okay. Um, I'm typically the type of guy, if I have two opposing opinions and, and, and one opinion is the mainstream and the other opinion is a very small minority, I will have a very close look at the minority opinion because even if it is weird, there could be some truth in there. And that is a truth that the mainstream just doesn't see. And that is the only way actually to find out something new. So I... I take a very close look at the parapsychological people and, and my impression is that they, they are doing their best to make proper science. They are just not accepted. I hope they will be more accepted in the future. Um, and then of course there's the spiritual folks who say, oh yeah, you are living in your own reality and you are changing that reality all the time. Which is a bit too much on the esoteric side for me. Because I think there is some kind of, of, of uh, well, you know, I, I think the reality that we see, the physical reality, it should emerge as some kind of superposition effect of, of the superposition of the mindscapes uh, involved. Yeah. So reality is created by the totality of beings that reside inside the reality. And that don't, obviously, I don't mean humans only, I mean also all the other animals and plants and so on. It is some kind of, of, of a, Reality is, is a, a consensual endeavor um, to, to, to me. Yeah? And it should be possible to, 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 to derive a mathematical theory about that. And actually, they are trying. They are trying. Um, there is consciousness, uh, contemporary consciousness research tries to, to, to find a mathematical way of, form, of formalizing and describing consciousness when it comes to relation with reality there is a fame then that's not famous but there is a german uh, scientist uh, johannes kleiner and there is a um, uh, um a seminar series called uh, mathematical consciousness i think I'm, I'm i'm in there it's pretty wicked and kleiner has actually described a mathematical model that indicates that the whole universe could be conscious that's that's his outcome and i find that so fascinating. It's it actually wickedly fascinating. Uh, if anyone is interested in that, um, that mathematical consciousness um, seminar, you can join there. Um, you can join there for free. And hang on, I don't know if I can put the. Oh, I don't. I don't have the URL already right now. If there's anyone interested, just 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 hit me with a PM, and I'll I'll send you the link. They they have got a, a conference, I think, uh, in September. I, I will definitely be attending if I can. I think I will be traveling that time, but I will be attending. Uh, 
Okay, so it's about time. I think let's close the panel. I think that I see there's still many people around. I will read the chat and maybe make some statements. And somebody already PM me. I'll come back to you. But okay, has this discussion going on? Great. Thanks so much to everybody. It was really, really great to have that panel. I love, I really love, love, love to talk about these things. And yeah, um, see you at the rest of the con. Unfortunately, it's it's over very soon. Thank you and goodbye. Peace. And thank you, Amber. Um, the next panel, or I guess next stream, is going to be uh, Fever Pelt's art stream, which is going to be from four to five. And then after that, it's going to be closing ceremonies. So this is the last panel for, well, no. Uh, the last panel for today is actually after the closing ceremonies. Um, but yes, the cl closing ceremonies are going to be soon. So I'll see you all there. Peace.